I'm going to demonstrate how to make through dovetails using the tails first method. It's, I think, a little easier to do than the pins first method, and I think most woodworkers use it when they're making through dovetails. So let's get started. We're going to start by marking the base lines on the ends of each part. So I'm going to set my marking gauge just a little bit thicker, I mean less than a 64 thicker than the parts. These parts are both the same thickness. So I'll set that just like that. And on the tailboard, I'll mark it first. I'm going to mark the faces and the edges, both faces and edges. Got a very sharp pin here, sharpened to a knife edge. On the uh, pin board, I'm only going to mark the faces. So you can see that that gives me a very clean line on, on both parts. So I'm done with the pin board for a little bit. Uh, next, I'm going to mark the tails on here. So I'll put this tail board in the vise. I'm going to use my dovetail marking gauge. This is a, a six to one angle. Um, but before I do that, I need to mark the location of the uh, tails. So we'll zoom in a little bit here. So I want to start about a quarter to three sixteenths in from each edge. So I'm just going to set that roughly to that. To, uh, that dimension, I'm going to put a little dimple in from each edge. So the outer part of each tail will start there. Uh, I'm going to put three equally spaced tails on here. So I'm going to open this up just to a starting point. I'm going to guess that's about right. So I'm going to start in my first dimple here. And, and I'm not going to dimple this yet because I don't know if this is set correct. I'm just going to walk this across. And the distance from this dimple here to here, wherever this ends up, that will be the distance between my tails. I want it a little smaller. I basically want it about that dimension. So I need to decrease this a little bit. Maybe about like that. We'll try it again. So starting in that first dimple, one, two, three. Okay, so that gets me right to the edge. That means this distance will be the distance between my tail. So I like that. So once again, I'll go in that dimple. I'll dimple that and that. Okay, and then I'm going to start from the opposite side and do the same thing. Dimple that and dimple that. And that gives me a nice uh, spacing there. Okay, I'm going to mark the tails now. I've got a dovetail marker that is a six to one angle. I could also use a sliding T-bevel, but this is going to be quicker and easier. So I'll align this with the mark here. I've darkened up the marks a little bit and I want to mark the end and the face
Okay, so there is the uh, dovetails marked out. So now we're ready to start sawing. Before I do that, I'm going to mark the waist to make sure I saw on the correct side of the lines. Okay, I'm ready to start sawing. I've got the board at a good height here. I'm going to saw all the right sides of the tails first, then I'll come back and do the left sides. So I'll start with my thumb off to the back and I can line the saw up nicely there on my line. I'll also align it at the correct angle or I'll try to get close to it. I'm going to make sure I'm relaxed. I've got everything aligned. My finger, the, my wrist, elbow, shoulder. I've got a good stance here on the ground. Left hand on the work and start with a push stroke. Once I start sawing, I want to just keep sawing even if my angle's not correct because I'd rather have a straight cut that's incorrect than a cut that's crooked. So. Trying to saw right down to my line. I'll come back and do the other side. Trying to stay relaxed the whole time. So that looks pretty good. Happy with that. So next we will cut the uh, waist out of there. I'm going to turn this horizontally. Making sure this is level so I can saw vertically over here. I'm going to move my light so I can see a little better on this side of the cut. Do the other side. Put this back vertical and I want to saw out the waste on the uh, using my fret saw the waste in between the uh, tails so this fret saw is a very small blade so it fits down inside there nicely Okay, so that looks good. I'll raise this up a little bit, make it a little easier to work. I'm going to grab a chisel now to uh, clean up the 
a little bit of crud down there in the corner. That looks okay. This side looks okay. All right, now I've got about a 32nd of an inch of material there. I'm not going to take it all off in one, maybe, maybe two passes there. Okay, now I'm down in my scribe line. I want a fairly narrow chisel here. If it's too wide, it's it's too hard to push. A little harder control. And once I've got a line established, it's easy to smooth the chisel sideways. There we go. Okay, now notice I'm, as I'm making those first cuts, I'm angling up a little bit so that I don't tear out the far side. So I'm going to line my chisel up there and then slide it over. Sometimes those first cuts mash the wood down a little bit and you uh, kind of lose your knife line or your scribe line. It closes up a little bit. All right, that looks good so far. We'll come in from the other side. I went in a little more than halfway on that first first round. These look good over here, I think. I'll put that back in there and slide over. Yes, yeah, so there's very little material there. It needs to be cleaned up. I think uh, this other side, same. Oh, maybe a touch more there. Really want to make sure I get into the corners. Uh, right down the base of the tails there. Okay, same thing here. This one's pretty close. I'm just going to go right in my line to start. There we go. And I'm, I'm cutting down at a little bit of an angle just to create a, a slight hollow there. I don't want to go too, too steep, but definitely want to avoid a hump because that would uh, create a gap. Okay, last one right in my line and wiggling that chisel a little bit that kind of helps me sneak up on that don't have to push quite as hard there we go So I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I can sight through and my corners look clean. That one needs a little bit of work. There we go. So we're good to go. Next we'll mark the uh, tailboard. Okay, next up we're going to mark the pin board. So the pin board gets marked using the tail board. And so I'm going to basically hold this uh, tail board at about this position and, and mark this with my marking knife. Now I, it's going to be hard to hold this. So what I want to do is uh, support the other end of this board. So I'm gonna be just going to use this uh, sanding block. Doesn't matter. Any piece of wood will work. Uh, 
so, so in order to do that, this needs to be at the same height as that. So I'm going to set that like that. We'll tighten that up so that's at the right height. And now I'll align this. I want to make sure that the uh, the base of the tails is even with the inside face of the pin board. Uh, I want to be aligned here. And that looks good. Okay. And because this is supported at each end, if I just push in the middle, it's pretty solid there. I'm going to use my marking knife to do this. Uh, now I need a very accurate uh, mark as opposed to earlier uh, the pencil mark was just fine. So I'll use my uh, marking knife here. A very light cut at first. Then a couple more passes so I'm making sure my knife's up against the uh, tail there but not cutting into it. Do all the right side first. Now I'll come in here to the left side. Once again, very light first pass. Okay, that looks good. Now in order to saw this, I'm going to raise it up a little bit, making sure it's vertical. I'll mark the uh, waste. I want to remove that material where the tails are going to go. And now I'll saw. Now you might want to take your square. I have a saddle square here. You might want to draw some vertical lines here down from these. I'm practice this a lot, so I, I can usually saw pretty uh, pretty vertical. So I'm not going to do that, but that might be helpful. So I'll do all the easy ones first, where the line is on the the left side of the saw. So now I want to be vertical and match the the line that came from the uh, tailboard. Once again, trying to saw right down to my line, trying to stay relaxed, relaxed grip on the saw. So I move the, my light to the other side, make it a little easier to see. So now I'm peering over the saw with just my right eye to see to see that line there. Okay, I'll use uh, once again the fret saw to remove that material.
notice I'm using a two-handed grip on this saw. Seems seems like overkill, but, but it really gives you a lot of control. One and once again I got my finger pointing down the direction of cut. more material to remove here. This will take a little longer. Once again, trying to undercut a little bit. Okay, I got less, it's like less than a 30 second there, so pretty happy with that. So once, once I've got one cut here, it's best just to move over and take just a little bit at a time. It really gives you a lot of control. So that looks good. Making sure the corners are clear as before. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Get down here. Now I did, uh, looks like I missed my line on, on this one. So I'm going to pair a little bit. I want to pair from the outside face in. So if I do get some tear out, it'll be on the inside of the uh, cut there. And... I want to pair this way, not this way, because coming down, you never know which way the grain's going. It might uh, might want to dig in, so it works best to pair perpendicular to the uh, to the grain direction. There we go. So I'll kind of roll that down a little bit. As long as I'm doing this, I'll just see the rest of these look pretty good. A little hair material there. That looks okay there. So I think that's pretty clean. I'll just make sure once again the bottoms. Good. Okay, I think we're ready to see how this fits. Uh, 
Okay, so I hold that up there and seems seems pretty good. Get my palette here. All right, that uh, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Don't really see any gaps there. No gaps there. Yeah, I think that's that's a good one. We'll stick with that.